there's a lot of us in the room who have devoted ourselves to analyzing hegemonic discourses and deconstructing them. And in fact, Kate and I just came from our sociology of gender class in which we attempted to deconstruct the binaries of race, class, gender, and sexuality. That was quite an amazing lecture that Kate just gave doing that. Where a lot of us struggle is when students say to us, well, what's the alternative? What's, what's the... What's another way of thinking that's not consistent with these hegemonic discourses? And here again, I turn to what a panel like this can achieve, what this panel has achieved. That is reminding us all that alternative discourses do exist. They are out there. They are pervasive. They are often embodied by persons of color and persons who are marginalized by virtue of gender, class, and sexuality as well. So what I hear from this panel is the very strong message, listen. Listen, these alternative voices are out there. They should be, they must be incorporated into our classrooms. Um, finally, what I get from this panel, which I so greatly appreciate, are very specific things that we can do. I'm very grateful when people say, look, when you make a joke, no matter how innocent, that's a microaggression to somebody in your class. Notice if everybody is laughing or not. Some people maybe are laughing out there. What does that tell you when you make your silly joke? Or these other microaggressions that, um, that Juan has uh, described, um, look at those curriculums. Look at, look at the people who are the writers, the scholars who are represented on that syllabus, do they have anything in common? Do they actually represent alternative points of view, alternative embodiments that are the result of power and inequality? And this leads me to conclude with um, some excellent advice that I received um, at a lecture that Omi uh, Osen, uh, Joni Jones, once gave on lessons for allies. These are lessons that we can all learn and incorporate into our daily practices. One of the things she told me that uh, told everybody at her speech that was uh, so important was to listen when you're called out. We have to listen when those alternative discourses are directed towards each and every one of us because for most of us, we do occupy some position of privilege, and that's your blind spot. That's the part that you can't see, the part that you're privileged by. So we have to always be vigilant and listen when we are called out, and to be grateful for people who have taken the time, energy, and the struggle to call us out. It means that our views care. Our views count, they matter, people have taken the time to call us out. The least we can do is listen. The least we can do is say, I hear you, I'm going to take a moment, I'm not going to be defensive, I'm going to process, I'm not going to tell you to be patient or it will get better. I'm not going to tell you that. I'm going to listen and I'm going to learn from your experiences of oppression in this institution. So thank you, Juan. Thank you, panelists, very much.